After failing in their sustained bid to oust Dominic Cummings, the lefties and hardline Ramonas have their eyes set now, their target set on Tony Abbott. Viewers of this channel, of course, will remember him, me describing him as, they fought, as the potential Brexit UK secret weapon after it was reported in The Sun that he was set to be unveiled as joint president of Britain's relaunched Board of Trade. But oh no, because we've seen it on Sky News, we've seen it from Keir Starmer, the criticism now reigning in on his views. He's a social conservative. But this is, and I'm sure on some issues, I wouldn't agree with him. But look guys, this guy was Prime Minister of Australia from 2013 to 2015. He was leader of the Liberal Party. Liberal. A word some seem to have completely lost touch with. But he was set to be appointed and of course some people have kicked off in a ridiculous latest witch hunt. Perhaps his real crime is that this is a guy who wrote in The Spectator when it comes to the EU negotiations, no deal, no problem. He's written about how Britain can get a zero tariff trade deal in his view with Australia by the end of the year. And Guido really laying it out. Abbott won a landslide victory as the democratically elected Prime Minister of Australia. The Abbott government concluded a major trade deal with China, major trade deal with Japan, major trade deal with South Korea. And the Abbott government worked on four further trade negotiations that were signed off after his tenure as PM. Now, Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, met with Tony Abbott. And of course, when we talk about the Australian uh, immigration system and the Australian approach to stopping illegal migrant boats, there's certainly some value in that. I'm sure the lefties didn't like that very much. But this media witch hunt shows you why, in my view, the full collapse in trust in the UK media, mainstream media, is fully justified. It's all focused on personality, isn't it? It's all focused on, can we get our scalp? That's what they're obsessed with. Not the substance, not the substantive issues, not the possibility that actually Tony Abbott and having a former prime minister from another country out there helping to secure global trade deals could be good for the country. Oh no. Oh no. It's about trying to get their scalp and trying to oust them. And are the government going to capitulate to the outrage mob? Or are they going to hold firm? Now, of course, Keir Starmer has said he has real concerns about Tony Abbott and doesn't think he's the right person for the job. The Guardian, of course, have jumped onto this. Number 10 urge to revoke trade deal for misogynist Tony Abbott, they report. Calls grow, grow to block the appointment of former Australian PM as trade advisor, the Guardian report. And they've learned that Emily Thornbury, remember her? The shadow international trade secretary who was called Abbott a Trump worshipping. So you can't be, you can't like Donald Trump. That's that's a sackable offence in the eyes of these people. A Trump worshipping, worshipping misogynist, in her words, wrote to her opposite number, Liz Trust, challenging her to explain the mooted post. Liz Truss, the UK trade secretary, to be fair, hit him back and saying the reality is that those on the left of politics are always intolerant of anyone that doesn't agree with them but are prepared to defend anything from their own friends. I'm sure I wouldn't agree with everything that Tony Abbott says. That isn't the point. This is about global Britain. This is about Brexit opportunity. This is about getting in someone with experience and know-how to help secure global trade for Brexit Britain. And some sane voices on Twitter pointing this out. Julia Hartley Brewer. I'm a feminist, very pro-gay marriage, she says, and I can't abide Trump. But I really can't see what ex-Australian PM Tony Abbott's views on gay marriage, women or Trump are remotely relevant to his ability to do a good job as a UK trade envoy. Patrick O'Flynn saying the woke left thinks someone with any conservative social views on any issue should be cancelled altogether and blocked from employment on grounds of moral defectiveness. Martin Daubney, my old mucker. None of them remotely pair about Abbott's ability to do the job. They just want to damage the Tories as usual. Through historical grievance, archaeology. He goes on to say, weirdly, if Labour and Sturgeon don't like somebody, it makes, them, it makes me like them more, but that's just me. And finally, Susan Hall, the leader of the Conservative group on the London Assembly, saying, well, I don't think of myself as a feminist. 
I am pro-gay marriage and I don't hate Trump, but I completely agree with Julia. If Tony Abbott is a great trade envoy, we absolutely need him here. There's a wider point to this. Are you going to have a government and are you going to operate in a way that every time some elements of the media and Labour start whinging, you cave in because they managed to whip up a minor Ferrari? And the case study, to be fair, was Dominic Cummings, wasn't it? We were told, oh, look at all these front pages from everyone from the Mail to the Mirror. It's all over. He's got to go. He's done for. This government can't go on with Dominic Cummings. You know what they did? They dealt with it. They didn't sack him. And look at the polls. Was there a Conservative collapse? No. Was there a Labour surge? No. Who's overwhelmingly led in all of the polls? The Conservative Party. Increasingly, as I said, the media and political uh, landscape has a hardcore element of snowflake lefties who are basically offended by everything, can't deal with any views they don't agree with, and as soon as someone is appointed that they don't like, they try to get them cancelled and oust them. And don't forget, it's the Conservative government that have a mandate from the people. Shock horror. Conservatives appoint social conservative to role. It's not exactly shock news, is it? But there's a serious point to this. Because either you can cave in to the outrage mob, or you can hold firm. And really, when it comes to Boris Johnson's Prime Minister, when it comes to this government, are they going to cave in to outrage, or are they actually going to seize the opportunity of getting an experienced people on trade from across the world for the betterment of this country and for the advantage of this country. That's what this is really about. Let me know what you think, guys. Do you think the government will hold firm? Do you want to see them hold firm and make Tony Abbott a joint president of Britain's relaunch? Board of Trade, or do you think they're going to cave in? And who do you think they might go for next? Because it doesn't stop here. If they get this scalp, and if they'd got Cummings, it would have been even worse. But if they get this scalp and stop this now, all it means, all it encourages, is that every time someone conservatively minded is appointed to a role, they'll dig up selected quotes, they'll whip up a, a, an outrage storm, and then they'll try to get them cancelled. If you cave into the outrage mob, don't think it'll be done there. It will continue. Will Boris Johnson hold firm? Let me know what you think. And as ever, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to hit subscribe. Remember to click that bell so you don't miss the next report. Cheers.